everybody, how are we? My name is Unicorn Ponzu. Welcome back to another video. And Chantal uploaded another video. It's called Slip Ups on Weight Loss Journey. Which, um, not surprised by this to be fair, but um, I guess we'll see what Chantal has to say today, shall we? Hello, foodie beauties. <laughs> so, it's 10.4. Uh, With a broken monitor, to be fair. Uh, despite eating very poorly yesterday. You know, I attribute that probably to my medication and the increase in exercise, but who knows? It fluctuates. So 10.4 is my fasting reading today. Um, it is 3 p.m. I did not eat yet. And that's because I ate too much last night. So this is- Of course, but like also, go I don't trust anything that this meter says because it's broken. This is the, uh, the reading. Well, hello guys. So I have a kind of sit down and talk update video for you. Um, tomorrow is weigh-in day, and uh, I expect it not to be as good. I don't expect to have a loss, maybe a slight gain. I don't know. Um, maybe not. Which is why people has been telling you, go seek professional help, because you can't do this on your own, girl. Otherwise, you would have been a skinny mini by now, but yet, here we are. Like, I get not wanting to ask for help and seeming like a bother, yada, yada, yada. Like, I get it. I, I get that firsthand, but, like, there's going to be, like, a point in time to where you just have to say, yeah, I can't do this on my own. And the day that she can do that, she can finally lose weight, but we're just going to DIY it up until then. From actual fat but i think if anything else from retaining water because i eat so much sodium i have eaten so much sodium particularly yesterday which the doctor said for you to avoid because of your diabetes yes um yesterday the day before so for about three days now i haven't i've been slipping you know i'm in that stage right now where um you know i start off going strong and then um i start slipping things get a little tough you kind of just get sick of it and it's so easy to fall back into old habits and to just give in to um, urges to overeat and the B word. We're going to call it the B word, which is like code for binge eating. Um, so, yeah, I did have some uh, B word occurrences. Of course, Chantal, like, we know you by now. Even I said whenever she gets, like, pushed into a corner, the only thing that she has left to comfort herself is food. It's not that hard to put two and two together when it comes to Chantal. Come on. So, yesterday was particularly bad. Last night, I stayed up pretty late, and I had a lot of snacks. And, you know, my husband was like, when, when we were doing groceries, he's like, you know, I was like, oh, I want the snacks. And he's like... If I get the snacks, you're sure that you're not going to have a problem with the B word with them. And I thought, I can control myself, you know? I mean, good for him for having some faith in her. But, like, at the same time, though, he should, like, obviously probably put two and two together also that there was going to be a problem if he got the snacks. I can't really, so. <laughs> so, I don't know what I'm going to do with them. Maybe chuck I don't want to chuck them. Maybe give them away to one of Salah's friends or something like that. Um, he has other healthier snacks. He doesn't mind eating to help me out um and yeah so um i'm back on track today however i'm going to acknowledge what happened i'm not going to you know let it drag on for too long or make a huge deal feel super guilty because then i will just keep spiraling out of control which hey okay, great love that for her but like at the same time though girly uh there's going to be a time and place where um one of those slip ups ends up leading to something either fatal or something bad medically happening which i don't wish on her by any means but just realistically it's probably going to happen if she keeps on like this because if i'm being honest with you i'm kind of surprised that we've gotten this far without anything major happening control and the control will be harder and harder to rein back in so um so right now i'm making a dinner for myself and salah i'm having uh, i'm making a chicken i'll show you what i have today to eat um so I'm making a roasted chicken in the oven and just some spices a bit of olive oil that kind of thing uh, making some rice for him but uh, i'm making a sweet potato for myself and i don't know what else i'll add on there maybe a salad or who knows but um sweet potato maybe some cheese with that uh and that would be my dinner. That would be my dinner. Um, and I don't know what else. Maybe I'll have a tuna sandwich later if I'm really hungry. Maybe some dates. I don't know. We'll see. So I'm just trying to get back on track. I'm paying particular attention to how poorly I feel from the B word yesterday. Um, I had nightmares. I had really bad dreams. 
I can't really remember what they are. I just remember the... F oh, yeah. It was, like, super weird. Every time I dream, I'm always dreaming that I'm, like, living... At, I'm staying at my mom's house and I can't ever find my car and I have to call her, like, you know, and bug her to come pick me up. Um, and when I called her this time, you know, my stepdad answered and I could hear in the background freaking out. They found, like... I don't know they had this huge oven that they don't even have and they found like the body of this woman in there and she was surrounded okay well this gets really dark really fast um i was expecting them to like find like pizza boxes or something if i'm being quite honest with you or like food that she was hiding away or like boxes of food that she ate that she hid inside of the of, of, oh chantal you wonder why people have been screaming at you to get some sort of I don't know, mental slash physical help you wonder why to buy all these teeth it was so weird like really long teeth anyway i had really weird bad dreams um but yeah in my dreams i'm never an adult and i'm ever hardly living on my own and there's a few times where i i live in this apartment and there's an apartment it comes with this like little apartment next door because there was a woman who passed away in there and um it's like locked up like you you shouldn't go in there you know the landlord's okay. like we went from like you know serious health talk oh my gosh blood sugar to dreams though which i mean hey i'm here for but just i was not expecting this turn of events and if i sound different i'm not sick by the way like insistent i shouldn't go in there and when i do <laughs> because duh um it's a dream even though i'm like in my dream i'm telling myself i don't want to go in there it's cool I'm, I'm not curious i end up going in and it's like super haunted and it's creepy as heck and it's like a malevolent ghost so i'm like afraid for my safety and i just have all these nightmares especially i find if i'm eating late at night um i remember one author i don't know who i was reading was it joe lansdale one of the horror authors i was reading in university um attributes before the stories start to him eating a, a lot of late night popcorn with butter or something like that buttered popcorn yeah i've heard about people eating a lot of cheese at night and dreaming slash being able to lose a dream i think slash also being able to sleepwalk also so i don't know if maybe that there's an ingredient in there or something that does something with our minds at night but and that's where he would get his ideas from like i'm telling you eating junk late at night can give you nightmares i'm not joking so i had nightmares i was so thirsty i felt really gross and dizzy and like if i wasn't t taking my medication um you know religiously for lack of a better term i don't know my blood sugars would probably be an emergency at this point because like i mean they were at an emergency before you started taking them to be fair and god knows what they were whenever you weren't checking them i wasn't feeling good already and you know so the medications i know definitely helping especially when i eat things not good for me so uh what else i just i had TMI but the worst going to the washroom I nausea I thought I was gonna be sick many times and just poor sleeping headache a really bad headache from the sodium I'm sure so it's not worth it like I'm paying attention to how I'm feeling after and it's just not worth it it's not worth feeling like absolute crap and but how many times have you done this though and felt the same exact way yet continued on like nothing was wrong also like, if you really want to go there, Chantal, it's not like you just woke up and, oh my god, I'm like 435 pounds. I'm just using a random number. Like, girl, you had to do some serious damage to get to that size. Come on. But, you know, it's great that, you know, at least, you know, on video slash right now, she's pretending like, oh my gosh, yeah, it's not really not that worth it. Okay, great. Just apply that to, you know, your everyday life. I just, it's not worth it for me. No. And, you know, I, it sometimes it doesn't change the urges. But I'm going to remember how I felt. I'm going to really try hard. And, and undoing all the progress that was so hard to do in the first place. It's um, I know it doesn't look like much to you guys who are like normal, for lack of a better term again. But keeping yourself in check when you have an addiction of any kind is a minute by minute fight. Especially at first. And I feel like I have to start all over again. Um, no, I'm not going to say start all over. I'm going to keep going. And, the, you know, like setbacks happen. I would say I started slipping probably with the Taco Bell. That was the f probably the first. No. Real? Uh, no, really now. I would have never guessed that a cheat meal that was, you know, junk food would have really actually caused your brain into going, yeah, no, I need some more of this. Healthy eating? Pfft, who needs her? I can have Taco Bell. I would have, girly, come on. Of course it was going to lead to something bad. Real slip? Um, and then, you know, I was like pot pie, I'm craving pot pie, all of these things that I was like, 
pushing away in my brain were like, ooh, so since you had Taco Bell, can I come in too? So yeah, you know, in theory, having a small piece of pot pie with some salad or vegetables wouldn't be that bad. But again, that's, I think, one food I just can't control myself over. I have this, I see this huge tray um, and I'm like, I know that I, you know, I could technically, I'm an adult, I'm, I, you know, I could do what I want. I could eat the whole thing, you know, I, I, I could eat the whole thing. I would feel sick, but I, I could do it. I have. Yeah, I'm the same way with orange chicken and trail mix. Don't ask me why or how with trail mix. I don't know. It's just so delicious and it's so good. And like, there's all lots of nuts in there and like, you know, but <laughs> it's just so good and has chocolate. And like, oh my God, keep me away from the trail mix. I will eat the entire thing and not ask questions. <laughs> I've done it before so um no it's just not something i can really control myself with so i'm not going to make that for a long while maybe ever <laughs> you know um that made me feel really sick and also wow who would have ever guessed that you quite literally having the serving dish right in front of you would lead you to overeat wow i would have never guessed anybody else surprised you back there and bye no yeah wow i know i'm shocked you know like i just I don't know why I do that. I mean, it's just really, it's a, it's just disordered way of thinking. I, I really can't explain it, but, um, I can't explain it effectively for people to understand. And I know a lot of people just won't understand and that's okay. You know? So, um, so yeah, I'm going to be back on track. My blood sugar reading you saw at the beginning was 10 point something which is not bad like i said my but the meter's also broken so just get you a new meter because i don't trust anything that that thing says sugars before consistently being back on my medication were like 23 in the 20s it was bad never below 15 usually so i just gotta stay on it and stay consistent with that and get back to walking um probably tomorrow i'm not feeling the greatest today you know and i have a lot to do that I've just been kind of putting off. So I'd rather finish everything and feel better and then go out and feel less guilty about going out. <laughs> but going out and walking is an obligation. I'm going to add it as a main obligation. You know, prayer, exercise, um, eating, eating healthy, things like that. So okay, I've been Well, Chantal, like the less that you start talking about it, the more that you actually do it. And like, I don't know, it, just do it out of spite even. I mean, if that's what fuels you at the end of the day to do it and prove everybody wrong, hell, go for it. I've been watching a lot of people who were fasting for religious reasons. Um, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, fasted every Monday and Thursday. And I wish I could do it because I do believe in autophagy, which is where you... Um, or, you know, I have a lot of fat reserves on my body. I could literally live without food for a long time. Just water, maybe. A bit Which you should not do unless if it's like very, very extreme circumstances. Like if, you know, if you don't have access to food and water, like, yeah, that would probably be like your only option. But since you have food and stuff and water, like don't starve yourself. Bit of Himalayan salt. I see, you know, health gurus, gym sharks. A lot of people actually do. Uh, main word that I'm not seeing on that list is medical professionals slash doctors. Do fast. It's good for the body. I believe that. But I wish I could do it, but it's too dangerous for somebody with the B word problem, you know? So I want to add, because you're probably wondering, what about Ramadan? Yes, I do fast during Ramadan. It's not that difficult because you can eat within a certain window. Like you can eat when the sun goes down. And I usually unless I try to eat breakfast, I usually don't eat till later in the day anyway. So it's not that bad actually, but not eating at all is the more difficult part. I have to accept that and take it step by step, not all or nothing, disordered thinking, and just like literally just do what I was doing. It was working. I was losing. I wasn't losing very fast, but it was a healthy way. I was eating healthy food and I was eating enough that, you know, those binge urges um, were being kept away. And I don't know what made me it's not it's never about real hunger it's mental illness that's what it all comes down to mental illness not being able to control yourself and not saying no to yourself and um being very irrational is what led you to be right here to where you are right now it's never about hunger biological hunger it's never about that with the b word that and also um you know not having any hobbies keeping your mind busy it doesn't even have to be anything like knitting or reading or something like video games i keep myself so busy with those that's actually really fun it's psychological it's a psychological disorder it's about missing um okay 
Okay, so you understand that like it's a mental problem. Why not go get mental help for a mental problem? Do you see where everyone's been screaming at you for years now to go do? Like, you might not like to do it. I mean, sure, I, I can understand that, but like, why not go get the help? Even though you, you registered that it's a mental problem, why not get the mental help for the mental problem? That's like, I don't know, giving stitches for someone that, that broke an arm. Like, okay, that in theory can work on certain things, but like, that's not going to fix this issue right here, right? Just. the comfort it gives you, you know? It, it's about missing that that feeling you get from it, the, the, the momentary gratification. It's about going out and just thinking like, oh, like it, ma it makes everything enjoyable. It's a, so it's like, I've been getting accustomed to going out and going to, you know, to the farm. I didn't order a single, I didn't order any fast food. I had a small ice cream, but like, or a gelato, but I shared that. But I didn't order fast food, you know, I ha brought my lunch. So it's like, normally when I go out, I feel like I would be missing something if I can't think of all the food I can get. I associate everywhere I go with food and getting us accustomed to that switching. Which is not normal. Like obsessing about food. Like I like food. I love food. Don't get me wrong. You know, I'm fat. Obviously I like food, but I'm not going out being like, ooh, where can I eat, go to eat? What are they going to be having? there? It's just like, oh, what can we go do there? What's the, uh, what's the activities? Like, is there access to water just in case if I get thirsty? Like that's the things that I go, but obsessing over food is definitely not one of them. In your brain. It's not as simple as just a switch. It's not a switch. It's a, it's a gradual process, and um, it's very difficult sometimes. If you're using um, food as anything other than to satiate your hunger and to sustain life, and I have to learn those things, you know. Well, like uh, at the same time, though, you can have fun with food, and also you can have a treat every now and then. But you know, not in mass. Just like you know, a little treat every now and then. It's not going to kill you. But like, if you do like Chantal does. Uh, yeah, it actually can. Um, anyway, so yeah, that's, uh, that's about it. I will show you guys what I'm going to eat whenever it's ready. So, um, I will just say bye now and just end my video with clips of what I eat. So, um, I really truly appreciate your guys' support, especially in my live streams. If those of you who are new don't know, I do no, some- Speaking of, can we not do those anymore? Which I'm not a big fan of, if you guys can't tell live streams here and there and I like just sitting and chit-chatting I've always liked that I've always liked doing that even with friends in real life just going to a cafe or just talking I used to talk on the phone for hours when telephones were a thing <laughs> like home phone I mean they they still are I mean home phones still are a thing too phones so all right so thanks for watching guys I appreciate you and uh, I'll see you bye so this is the meal for Salah some rice chicken legs Bakus, which is homemade tomato garlic sauce for the rice and olives All right, and here's my dinner. We have some chicken breast cut up With my dakus tomato sauce some cheese and, which looks good in theory, but like that, that's it something else Maybe something green or something on the side of that, but like it looks good Some olives and sweet potato with nothing on it. That's how I like it a little bit of sea salt And I'm having water and Salah's having a lemon Bismillah Okay, so there was that. We went to a lot of places and nowhere at the same time with that one. <laughs> but with that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching, and I guess I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.